What's going on, everybody? Uh, want to talk a bit about raker gauges here. Uh, when I took my master logger class or certification, uh, the guy that instructed the course, it was a multi time steel timber sport hot saw champion it's what he said and i looked him up and uh he has been doing it a long time and runs a saw a long time but anyway uh he went over the the chainsaw safety aspect of it but in doing so he talked a lot about chain and uh sharpening and um how sharp chain was kind of safety and all that kind of deal but what i'm getting at is he said that uh if you have your rakers too low that that will make powdery sawdust just like a dull chain would or a chain that has the rakers too high so there's uh a happy medium really is what i'm getting at with that and what i have here is i have two two raker gauges i've got the husqvarna uh the husqvarna raker gauge and i have the west coast saw raker gauge uh the west coast saw has four settings and uh husqvarna has two settings uh these are the only two kinds of raker gauges i have and i also in the past have used the husqvarna that comes in the kit with the roller guide or whatever i just tear the raker gauge off the roller guide because i don't use roller guides but i like the kind that does one individual tooth at a time because i feel like if you get one that lays across three or four teeth uh on those kind of raker gauges you would have to keep your teeth uh, pretty well all even for the raker gauge to work correctly uh, and i may be wrong on that but i feel like you would these kind right here uh just do each individual tooth so this chain right here is a i'm not going to say a new chain it hasn't made a few cuts on it but it's a chain that has never been sharpened nor has the rakers drags or uh depth gauges whatever you want to call them ever been filed and really those these ain't rakers or drags they don't really uh these ain't i mean everybody calls them rakers and drags but they don't really rake or drag any uh sawdust your cutter tooth is actually one that helps do that the sawdust comes in between here and here uh that's why with a skip tooth chain uh and this is what i learned from that gentleman uh and i i knew these really didn't drag anything but i really didn't realize the sawdust was in between these two and that's why on a skip tooth chain uh it'll come through on a weaker saw and it'll clear chips a little better it don't get bound up if you're sawing big wood because uh it's got a further space for the sawdust it'll hold more sawdust the skip tooth chain will uh in a sense and it'll drag it out a little more uh faster and better or whatever i guess because really when you're sawing these right here which everybody knows probably determines and some people may not that's new to the channel or just watch the channel because they like to watch cutting or whatever and don't really know i know i've got some new people and then i've got some that uh you know probably knows more about saw chain and sawing than i do but anyhow uh these determine how much wood this grabs and if you get them too low if you get them too low then it changes the what the angle that this tooth goes into the wood as it rolls you know into the wood or whatever and it makes it want to uh kind of flip up and hang instead of it more tears the wood if they're too low than it does actually cut the wood and that's what that uh guy was explaining to us you know it changes the angle that the tooth goes into the wood 
which I thought if these were too low, it just made this grab more wood, you know, and a weak, you know, if the saw was kind of weak or whatever, that's why it would hang up. But he acted like it actually, you know, uh, kind of flipped up or whatever. But anyway, uh, I'm outside because the electric's out all over town. And uh, what I wanted to show you is how these chains come from uh, the factory. And why on a weaker saw, you get a lot of bound up, you know, like on that 372, a lot of people thought my rake was low. A lot of times on that, it, it was a new chain that I was running. And I think like one time I had my rake set too low or whatever. And some chains vary. I noticed on that uh, skip tooth chain that whole swarm sent me that the uh, rakers was a little higher than what I had previously experienced on like a uh, steel chain and even that full comp whole swarm chain. So anyway, I want to try to show you if I can like how this sets up. So all right. I've got the Husqvarna gauge here, and I'm gonna do it on the hardwood setting. And like, you can't see that raker sticking up. That sits on that tooth, that bumps up against the back of it or whatever, is the way I do it. Some people may do it like, like this or whatever. I don't because it kinda, it's just easier for me to do it back here. And I like the way that cuts, because if not, then you, then I'd be already filing some, because you can see it sticks up a little bit. But I guess that's one way to do it. But then on the soft setting, let me see here. I'm trying to get it like I do it. You can barely just see a little bit sticking up, probably, You'd barely even take a scrub off that. So really from the factory, they dang near come on the softwood setting. Some chains do. And that's why to me, they're a little grabby if you don't have a powerful saw. Now these stills that I'm running with the bark box and the filter, that's got a lot of torque. Now I run all of them on the soft setting and I've very rarely, it's gotta be something like beach or a real hard hickory before I'll get the saw bound up any. Those saws pull, but something like on the 372, and even some on that 390, uh, it would, uh, or the 572, you know, it, it would bind up pretty bad. But on the west, oh my goodness, I just dropped my raker gauge down the, unit air conditioner unit that's what i got this sitting on oh my goodness but anyway so i don't guess it matters really which way you flip this but this one has quite a few different settings and let's go to the highest one right now Well, let me get my big fat finger out of the way. And it don't come back quite all the way like it should on a, on a full comp chain, but you still could use it. But you can see that's sticking up a little bit more than the, uh, than the soft was on the Husqvarna gauge. These raker here are a little lower. And if this was a skip two chain, it would be down even a little bit more because it would move the position of this and then you come back to the next to lowest setting and you can see quite a bit sticking out too we'll maybe we're getting a little more square with it you know uh, and this is on a chain that's never been touched like say and we're talking thousands here makes a difference. And that's something that, uh, to me, would be really hard to eyeball. And then there's, no, I'll take it back. This would be the next setting. Next highest. And then it'll be 
this one. Well, maybe I'm wrong on that. Yeah, then this one. That's quite a bit. And like I say, I'm talking thousands here. And then you go to this one, which when you buy one of these, it comes with a card. That's their lowest. And you can tell it's way, way, way lower than the soft is. That would be for some really, really soft wood on a very, very powerful saw around here, you know. Uh, out west, it may a little be a little better. So, but yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, I can't get y'all moved out. It's a big... Got it moved out all the way. Yes, so. But anyway, so there's a little bit of difference in in this stuff right here. Uh, I still like the West Coast saw gauges; they're really, really hard. But that's a little bit to show you the difference in them. And I believe the other Husqvarna gauge that kind of looks like this, that comes on top of the, the guide rail or the file guide or whatever, uh, is similar settings to that one. But the gauge is actually more like this one. But anyway, that's uh, I like this one because, like say, you got four settings, which around here, the bottom two, uh, in hardwood, you would never use unless you was like racing or whatever and even then i think it would still be too low uh because sometimes the lower you get them the slower the chain is really and uh but teach it on some people like it different where you, i like to be able to pull on my saw a little bit tend to work it a little bit without it just uh completely killing out and the more i cut with the rakers a little lower I'm getting to where I don't like to pull on it as much. Now, used to, I'd like to be able to just lay on that thing if I want to without choking it out. And if the rakers are too low, then you can't do that. But it will mess you up if you do have them too low. Uh, it be just about as bad as having a dull chain and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, and it depends really on what kind of wood you're cutting and how stout your saw is and what kind of chain you're running. Like I may run them drags a little lower on the uh, skip chain than I would the full comp chain. Uh, because on a full comp chain it shows, like the, the literature and the video we watched and what he talked about, uh, like on a full comp chain, like only every third and fourth cutter tooth is uh, grabbing cutting wood or whatever you know the rest are helping clear chips or something like that I'm pretty sure that's what he what it showed and uh, the chain as it's in there it's kind of snaky like just a bit not terrible and uh, anyway that's what that's what he said I don't know how true that is but uh, I don't figure he had any reason telling fibs and like say he know quite a bit about saw chain and uh, racing so uh, it's pretty good he said that typically on the race chains which they square file it but the angle and the and the depth the raker gauge whatever uh, they come back fairly close back in the factory specs not quite factory but pretty close they don't vary too far from that you know and you know a lot of people can make a chain cut faster than a factory chain and uh i believe some of that depends on what, what kind of wood you're cutting because you know you take and really really soft wood and you take a saw that's got or even like that skip chain that's on the high setting from the factory uh, and the the rakers felt like they needed to go down a little bit to me on there uh, you take somebody uh, that's cutting really soft wood well they can use like this gauge and set it on the very lowest one and they're definitely going to outcut 
uh, a stock chain just by changing the drags, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to share with y'all. And I want to show you how the, uh, the difference between the West Coast saw setting and the, uh, the West Coast saw, the lights come back on. The West Coast saw setting and the Husqvarna setting on the depth gauges. So there you go. Uh, we got more cutting coming up. We're getting very close to the giveaway. We're 481, I think, subscribers. As when I looked, and uh, I just want to thank everybody that subscribed and thank everybody that watched the channel. And welcome to everybody that's new. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the content and uh, let's keep on subbing, keep on growing the channel. Tell all your friends about uh, the Mitchell's Backyard Logging. And that's it. And whoo, still, it's still your daddy.